Hello friends and welcome to another edition of Thankful Thursday. So for today we're going to be talking about yoga for headaches. So it can be a tension headache or a migraine. So we're going to have a nice, very gentle kind of practice. You might want to have a pillow. It doesn't have to be a yoga pillow. It can be kind of your pillow from your bedroom. Maybe an eye pillow or just a towel. Um, so we'll be doing a lot very close to the ground, even lying down. Uh, sometimes it's nice to, um, if you have a favorite oil um, on your towel, you can take a bottle, mix it in a spritz. So that could be some lavender and lavender here. Some people like peppermint or eucalyptus. Uh, whatever side you spray, obviously the opposite side will be covering your eyes when it's time for that. I do love uh, past tense, doTERRA's past tense, it's the tension relieving. Um, so I'll actually put that kind of on the base of my neck or very carefully in my temples. It's very strong, uh, so you don't want to definitely get it into your eyes or anything, but that is one of my uh, migraine tension headache relieving lifesavers. So I will say that I do adore that. So anything else that you might want to be comfortable, if it's a blanket kind of thing, maybe some water or something. And so to begin, we'll find that comfy seated position. You also want to make sure if you're a lady and you have long hair, you want to make sure your hair is down, you don't want any of that tension, you want to be able to release the scalp a little bit. You can even take a minute and kind of give yourself that little scalp massage or if you have that past tense, you can apply that. I apply it usually to the very base of my skull in the back uh, quite liberally. Uh, sometimes I put a little bit on my neck, the temples I'm very careful on because again, it's very uh, strong. If you get it near or on the eye, in the eyes would be mm, not so good. And then so to uh, begin, we're going to take, we're going to come into the headache mudra, which is Mahashirsha mudra. And so you're going to tuck your uh, ring fingers in and then you'll take your index and middle fingers, touch your thumbs and extend your pinky straight out. You can rest your hands down on your lap as you lengthen up through the spine. If the head really hurts, maybe even chuck, tuck the chin a little bit just for today. Begin to take those deep three-part breaths, really inhaling. You're going to fill the belly, the ribs will flare out. Bring the breath all the way up into the collarbones, into the back of the body. On the exhale, you reverse the direction. Navel muscles draw slightly up and in. That's going to compress that vagus nerve, moving you into rest and digest. You can even think about really lengthening the exhales here, which further helps to relax. Those nice deep breaths here. And you want the breath to be you know, silent. So if you're a yogi, you don't want to be doing that ocean sound. That's a heated breath. For headaches, we don't want to be heating up at all. Some people like to even spray some rose water. Ayurvedically, that'll cool you down. And just breathing. Knowing that this hand position in yoga is going to help to lengthen the exhales as well. And that's going to bring us into that relaxation, relieving any stress. It's going to help to open and balance our first and second chakras, which are our centers of safety and self-nourishment. So all these good things. We're also instilling a sense of release and helping to let go of any worry or anxiety. Uh, it's also going to help to just add that calming kind of effect. It's cooling as well in this hand position. If you like, in your mind, you can silently repeat, as I exhale, I release stress and tension from my body and my life. As I exhale, I release stress and tension from my body and my life. Continuing to breathe here. You know, Roy T. Bennett said, don't be pushed around by the fears in your mind. Be led by the dreams in your heart. And isn't it interesting, I wonder if you already know, that what you focus on is what you will receive more of. You know, we all have 
fears, doubts, bad days, pains, even guilt and shame, in different shades perhaps. But most folks struggle with sometimes not feeling good enough or worthy enough, feeling unheard or alone, even unlovable, and you know thoughts and feelings are just that, thoughts and feelings. It doesn't make them true or even useful. You might ask yourself the next time one of these tapes is playing in your mind, is it always true? Is this useful to me or to others? Because we all have an inner critic, we know that it is possible to overcome it, to focus on the things that do serve us and others. Perhaps it's our dreams or our compassion. Maybe it's empathy or gratitude, generosity, whatever makes you shine. It might be what others are always so grateful for that you have to offer. Maybe it's something you aren't even really aware of until someone else points it out. But whatever that gift is or that dream is, what would it be like if you gave it to yourself? If you treated yourself the way you might treat a child or a friend who is down or hurting? You know, giving ourselves love and compassion is an empowering practice, is it not? And so I'd like to invite you now to take a breath in and just allow yourself to feel anything that isn't in your highest and best good. Maybe it's just pain or a headache. Maybe it's any doubts or limiting beliefs going on in the background, but just letting that be for a moment. And then exhaling out and just letting all of that go. That's right. And now seeing if there's anything that would feel really good to hear or say or do for yourself right now. And just letting it come to you in whatever way is natural, however it does. It might be a comforting phrase you need to hear or a new way of doing or seeing something. You might simply want to give yourself a little hug or stroke your cheek, whatever it is. Just taking a moment or so now for that self-care. Knowing that if nothing came up, the seed has been planted and just letting even that go for now as well. And that's right. And then gently coming back to the room. Taking your time, especially if you are experiencing a headache right now. No need to rush anything here. So we've already done some of that deep three-part breath. And so there's a couple more breaths we can do that assist us in releasing any kind of headache. It's going to help to balance us. And we've done it before, the Nadi Shodhana or alternate nostril breath. And so a nice way to do it, instead of doing the Vishnu Mudra, which is the uh, hand position like this, you can take those index and uh, middle fingers and just place them kind of in the center of the forehead for today. You can even give it a little kind of rub around and then your right thumb is going to be available to easily block off, gently of course, that right nostril. And as you do so, you can inhale up through your left nostril. When you get to the top, you'll take your pinky, seal the left nostril, and exhale down your right, going nice and slow. And then inhaling up the right nostril, blocking that with the thumb, and exhaling down the left nostril. Again, inhaling up left nostril, blocking that one, releasing right, exhaling down the right nostril, nice and slow. And again, inhaling up the right nostril, thumb seals. Exhale, left nostril. And then inhaling up, left nostril, pinky seals, thumb releases. Exhale, down the right nostril, taking your time. And inhaling up right nostril, thumb seals, release pinky, exhale down the left nostril. You can even keep the chin a little tucked if that feels better. Inhale up that left nostril, and seal it with the pinky, release the thumb, exhaling down the right nostril. And then inhale up your right nostril. Thumb seals, pinky releases. Exhaling down the left nostril. 
couple more. Inhaling up love. Pinky seals, thumb releases. Exhale down the right nostril. And inhaling up right, thumb's gonna seal, pinky releases. Exhale down the left. And inhaling up, left nostril, pinky seals, thumb releases. Exhale down the right. Last one, inhale up the right. Thumb seals, pinky releases, gently exhale down the left. You can rub that forehead, third eye for a moment and release the hands, just pausing here, noticing what you notice. That's a very balancing breath. And so it's balancing both hemispheres of the brain and can be useful. And so we'll do one more breath, and this one is a very cooling breath. So there's actually two ways to do it. I can only demonstrate one. If you can curl your tongue, then you can stick your tongue out to do this. It'll make like a straw as you stick it out, and you'll inhale in through that. So that's sitale breathing. If you can't curl your tongue, no worries. About 25% of us can't, and I am one of those. You're just going to take your tongue to the top of your upper teeth, your mouth will be open just a little bit. You're gonna inhale in through the mouth. So it's almost like a little snake kind of sound. And you close your mouth, take that tongue to the roof of your mouth and exhale through your nose. And you'll notice your tongue is now very cool. So if you made the, the straw with your tongue, also the tongue goes to the roof of your mouth either way. So the inhale through the mouth, tongue to the roof of the mouth, feeling that coolness on the roof of the mouth as you exhale through your nose. So we'll do about five of those. One more. And then gently just pausing here, noticing what you notice, sensing what you sense. So sometimes that change of temperature, a lot of us will use heat or ice for a headache, for a migraine. So you're doing that naturally with your breath and with your tongue. So a change of temperature changes the circulation of blood, and that's going to also change the oxygenation levels in the brain, which can be very useful for us. And so you can keep a soft gaze or lights dim if you are experiencing any form of headache here today. We're going to be moving slowly and gently. So we're just going to really drop our chin down as close to the chest as it goes now. And just taking some breaths here. We're releasing the back of the neck. Our shoulders are still drawing together behind us. And your belly is lifting up and in. Ribs are in. You're just focusing on those nice deep breaths. Again, no ocean sounding breath. We don't want to be heating up with a migraine or a tension headache. We want to be cooling down. It's just the three part or dirga, no ujjayi. And then on an exhale, you can round, keeping the chin tucked. So now we're releasing kind of the shoulders and the neck. You can breathe normally here, but we're going to hold this kind of cat pose. So it feels good. You can gently move the neck a little bit side to side. Nothing crazy, just little tiny movement. Now keeping the ten, chin tucked, we're going to come back up straight. You can even arch into a slight cow, but for today we're going to keep our chin tucked. And then breathing here, shoulders are drawing back again. Return to the center and we'll repeat that a couple times nice and slow. So that rounding, and shoulders are coming forward, chin stays tucked whole time. You're just taking those nice deep breaths here, maybe even lengthening the exhale. 
Bring it back to the center. Chin stays tucked as you arch into your cow, drawing the shoulders back and down. And we'll do one more. Slowly return to the center. Round. Just breathing. You can always move the head a little bit if it feels good. Slow center, shoulders go back and down, chin stays tucked as you arch the back here into that cow-like posture, and then come back to the center. Maybe roll the shoulders gently and slowly around, keeping your chin tucked. I like to kind of give myself a little hug and a squeeze on each side just to release anything else. And so from here, we're gonna slowly from chin being tucked, take our head over so that the, the ear, the right ear goes towards that right shoulder. And you're just drawing those shoulders back and down. It doesn't have to be a big movement, it can be a little softer. So your right hand is on the ground. And so you can begin to just see what it feels like, explore lifting the left arm up. Of course, if this doesn't cause you any discomfort, you can lift it up. We're not really going really far, but just to get a little bit of an opening in the ribs, not necessarily a full lateral bend. Just take a few breaths here. It can be low. If it wants to stay down, that's okay. Wherever you are, it's fine. Just stretching out the neck, the ribs a little bit here, breathing. And if the hand did lift on the left, it's going to lower back down. You're going to come back to the center. Chin goes back to the chest. Sometimes I like to move it very gently side to side, releasing any tension in the back of my neck. And the left hand comes down. Left ear towards left shoulder to wherever it's comfortable to you. And maybe the right hand will come up just a little bit. Maybe it stays down and you just lean a little. Maybe it comes part way up. We're not going into a big lateral bend. We want slow, gentle movements today. And the breathing, wherever it's at, is just right for you. And you're exactly where you're supposed to be right now. And then slowly chin back, release the right hand. Again, if it feels good to make those little micro movements with the neck, the chin tucked, feel free to do so. And if not, then just skip it. Skipping anything that doesn't feel good for you today, of course. So we're gonna come into our table position, all fours. Take your time getting there. I like to keep my chin tucked kind of when I have a headache. I know moving my head around a lot kind of makes it worse. So I'm going to move nice and slowly, deliberately here. I'm going to let my knees be kind of wider than a regular kind of table. So a little bit wider than my hip distance apart here. Move my blocks out of the way so that you can see. Keep my notes forward here. And so from here, I'm going to keep my chin tucked. All right, and here I'm gonna do some more of these cat-cow movements, but with my chin tucked. So I'm really gonna kind of round it up and I might hold here. Sometimes I don't know why, but sometimes I just like to kind of really gently kind of rock back and forth. I find it comforting. If that's not comforting to you, that's fine. It's a kind of a personal thing I add on. I don't know why rocking is always calms me. I'm going to kind of hold that, so I'm really getting into my shoulders. My chin's going to stay tucked for this. I'm just taking those nice deep breathe, breaths, maybe concentrating on lengthening the exhale here. And then as I keep my chin tucked, I'm also going to go into a gentle kind of cow. And I'm just going to hold this and breathe here now. So what I'm doing is I'm releasing a bunch of tension in my upper back, my lower back, but I'm keeping my neck kind of tucked, my chin tucked, so that I'm not moving that head around too much. And also what I'm doing is I'm keeping my head kind of down, which is increasing the blood flow to my head, which increases that oxygenation and circulation kind of thing, which can be very useful in getting rid of a headache. It also is useful in not causing that 
stabbing pain that sometimes comes when we move our heads around and we have a migraine or something, right? So you can go through that a couple times. And you can be just staying stable, steady, or I like to, like I said, do just a little bit of that kind of rocking. It feels comforting to me. So you're breathing in and out here. You're not holding the breath, of course. And then moving into the cow, it's the same kind of thing. Maybe you like to shift your hips a little bit here, kind of can relieve a little bit of tension in the lower back for some folks, or you can just hold it stable and steady, it's fine. Okay. So we're gonna do a thread the needle, but we're gonna do it nice and slow and gentle. So the right hand will slide forward, and that left arm is gonna come under. And we're gonna hold here. And so if it's comfortable, you can extend that right arm off. And sometimes if lights really bother me or something like that, I might even just kind of take my right hand to the back of my neck and kind of block any kind of light with my elbow here and kind of even just like give myself a little pressure massage in the back of the neck as I breathe a little bit here. bring that hand down and keeping in mind any of these poses that feel really really good to you you can hold for as long as you like we're just moving through you know and then we're going to of course switch the sides so the left hand is going to come front and center and the right arm is going to thread through and so you can if it feels good to stretch out the shoulders extend the left arm or you can take that left hand to the back of the neck the occiput you know, left elbow will block out kind of your vision and you can kind of give yourself a little massage or if it feels better you can kind of just pet your hair how comforting is it when you pet your hair or your scalp if you're not having a lot of hair whatever it is it feels very comforting a lot of the time so whatever feels right to you just taking the time for self-care here nice deep breathing maybe even lengthening the exhales Keep in mind too, you could also have a, a pillow or a bolster here. That would be more comfortable, more restorative for you. And we're gonna come back up here. So again, our knees are gonna stay kind of wide. So if you have any kind of um, neck injuries, you might wanna use a little bit of caution with this. That being said, I have a lot of neck injuries and this is comforting to me. So just using your own judgment and taking care of you, we're gonna bring the crown of the head to the mat. So you can have your hands here, and if you're placing the weight in your hands, then even a neck injury isn't really necessarily gonna be an issue here. Now, if it's comfortable enough, make sure it is the very top crown of your head, not at an angle, or you're just going to be kind of compressing your cervical vertebra, which is never a goal. But if it's the crown of your head on the top, you might find that this is kind of an okay position for you. So from here, you can go back a little bit, bring the arms behind. And so it's kind of a modified rabbit, full rabbit you would be holding on to, but we don't want to be really exerting ourselves. You'd be holding on to your feet, your knees would be hip distance apart. We're kind of just making it a kind of soft, soft bunny rabbit here today. And so this crown of the head, you know, it's a pressure point and we're definitely having an inversion, so the blood is definitely moving to the head. And some breathing here. And so again, any of these poses can be held for a few breaths or a longer period of time, depending on what you feel is working best for you. So we're just gonna kind of release that. You wanna release out of these really slowly, particularly if you have a headache. So I'm gonna go nice and nice and slow. I'm even gonna keep my chin tucked here. So I might tuck my toes behind to get a little bit of an ankle stretch. My chin is still tucked and kind of just changing now. So I went from a very and you can go slower than that from an inversion 
to kind of upright. My head is still tucked, of course. And then from here, I'm gonna take my fingers, my peace fingers, I'm just gonna give my temples a little gentle massage, maybe even the jaw. Sometimes when we hold tension in our jaw, it can tighten up the temples, tighten up the neck. They say that when we hold tension in our jaws, we also hold tension in our pelvic floor, and all of this is not conducive to releasing any kind of headache. So taking a moment or two, if that feels right to you. So if you're still doing okay, we won't be coming to full standing, but we will come into a downward facing dog because again, this is another one of those inversions and it's a great stretch out for most of the back and neck, but you can make it a very soft and very wide dog today. And you still want your but to be the highest peak, of course, you still want your shoulders engaged and you definitely want the neck to be really relaxed. So keeping in mind that, you know, sometimes it doesn't feel good to shake the head out when you have a headache, but you can gently see if moving it a little bit feels good. And if it doesn't, that's just fine. Your knees can be very soft today. You can be up on the balls of the feet. Your heels don't have to be flat. You're just going to breathe. Just letting all of the tension flow out of the back, out of the neck, releasing. Again, this is an inversion, so blood flowing to the head, increasing circulation, increasing oxygenation. If you're still doing okay, you can begin to walk the feet forward. Very, very soft knees today. So we'll do a ragdoll here. Your ragdoll today might just be hanging out. If it feels good, you can sway. I am kind of keeping my head still, pretending I have a headache, because it does not feel good for me to shake my head when I have a headache. But little movements might help to release any tension in the back of the neck, and gravity is helping us here. So if it is okay for you to stand just for a couple minutes doing the downward facing dog and the rag dog, gravity is really going to help. So it's kind of nice to just let yourself be here even if you're holding still and just breathing. And that's all for standing today. It's a very gentle practice as I said. So you can step it back to dog. Maybe lengthen it out just a little bit and then we'll gently lower our knees down, okay? And so full time, not really looking up, not really moving the head into any of those flexion kind of positions. And so now you can part the knees or you can keep them together. You can have a bolster here to do more restorative. Uh, I don't really recommend the bolster unless you need it. It's just one more thing that you have to be carting around. But we'll come to a child's pose. Your hands can be out in front of you or you can even bring them back wherever you get the most release in the neck and the shoulders. What we want to do here, so if you're using a bolster, you might um, put a block on top of it, which is why it's simpler just to not if it's comfortable enough, of course, but rock that forehead very gently now across the mat. You're going to be massaging that third eye. There's a bunch of pressure points there as well not only help take you within, but also can help with the headache, help to release things. And taking your time, those nice deep breaths. And then very, very, very slowly coming back up. We're going to turn and bring our feet together. Chin stays tucked here. And again, it's another forward fold. And just with the feet in cobblers. So cobblers is close in. If that's not comfortable, you can take them out a little bit farther to what we call that tarasana. Sometimes I'll even take my hands up for receptivity. Chin, chin is tucked. So I'm just breathing here. Obviously, this is again releasing the neck, the shoulders, but it opens the hips a little bit too, which can help stretch out the lower back. We want to get as much tension 
out of the back of the body as possible when we have this kind of head thing going on, this headache, but without, you know, really physically acting, you know, very exertively. Okay, we want to be doing self-care. And then you can gently come up. I'm going to keep my chin tucked, or at least head down, and I'm going to straighten my legs out. And so if you have a blanket or a bolster, you can do this restoratively, kind of just folding forward. You can also, if that's not very comfy, you can have something below. So you're just going to kind of hang out. It's not about like how close the head comes or grabbing the feet. It's that gentle kind of almost restorative forward fold here, just breathing. Again, holding any position that you like for longer periods of time. I'm only holding each posture for short periods of time so that if you're watching the recording, it's not a very long, overwhelming process or class when you do have a headache. So now we're just going to very gently, and I'm going to keep my chin tucked, begin to roll our way down. So I'm going to take a block with me as well here. So when we get all the way down, we're going to come into, so this is one when you're, if you do bridge, you definitely don't want anything below your neck. So, but your chin is tucked and you can lift up into a bridge. If it feels all right, you can hold it for a few breaths. So when we're doing this bridge, we're releasing the tension again from the neck and the shoulders. and then gently lower that down, okay? So if you have a wall nearby you, you can also take the legs up the wall. I don't have a wall um, that's within camera view, so I'll be using the block. So it's kind of, if you're using the block or something else or a cushion, it's kind of in a comfortable position, um, you know, a little bit behind, I would say my tailbone. The wall would be a lot uh, more relaxing, I would say. And of course, there's not that lift, so there's not the little bit of a back bend. So if you're using the block, you do want to be cautious with that. So if your legs are up the wall, it's the Ferriti Carini. Again, you're going to have now the blood flow coming all the way down. This is a great posture for fatigue, for cramping, for any swelling. And it's great, of course, for headaches because, again, we have blood flow, oxygenation going to the head. This is one that can be held for quite some time. For today, we're just gonna take about three more breaths here. gently coming away from your wall if you're using the block very slowly removing the block very slowly lowering down so now you'll be bringing your feet wide and your knees together and you can take that pillow maybe it's your favorite pillow from your bed whatever feels best on your head and neck you can take that eye pillow or if you're just using a towel you spritz the uh, oil, whether it's lavender, eucalyptus, whatever works for you on one side, you would cover your eyes with the opposite side, of course, so that you don't have that going in to your eyes. And you're just going to bring your hands to your belly. You can really let your belly just soften as you breathe deeply here, maybe smelling that oil or scent. And the muscles of the groin relax, the whole abdomen, pelvis relaxing here. Just letting go. And then you can take your hands very gently behind your head. So my thumbs are going to be kind of at the occiput or the base of my neck. 
sometimes I give myself a full kind of nail, kind of head kind of scrub, or sometimes I just kind of dig my thumbs into the base of the neck, depending on what kind of headache it is or what feels good at the time. So just taking that time to release anything that needs releasing. Giving yourself a little bit of self-care here. Then you can either come to the Supta Baddha Konasana if that would feel better, or you can extend your legs fully out into a regular Shavasana type pose. Getting yourself as comfortable as you can be, making any props available to you if you want to cover up. Just feeling the whole body relaxing on the ground. And that right here and right now, everything is okay. And sometimes we need a little downtime for that self care. And so just feeling the body relaxing into the ground. Letting go of any worries, any tension, just breathing. And there's nothing and nowhere else for you to be or to do. Just breathe right now, letting go. And that's right. And just letting relaxation flow from your head all the way down to your toes. From this space, maybe you can find a place in your body that feels very, very comfortable. Maybe there's just no sensation there. I don't know. It might be the back of your hand or your big toe behind your knee. Really focusing on that place, either a place that feels good and loose or feels no sensation now. Seeing what it would be like to imagine that sensation moving and flowing through your whole body. Letting it move and spread and flow. You could, if you're still feeling any discomfort, Focus on that discomfort and give it a color, whatever color comes to mind. And then imagine what color would actually feel good, would feel relieving. And let that color flow from your head all the way down to your toes. Just letting go, releasing thoughts, you can just imagine any remaining thoughts being like leaves floating in a river, any of that happy, sad, good, bad, mad, anything at all, just leaves floating away. Drifting, drifting, gone. Everything changes, everything passes. Maybe focusing on the breath leaving and entering the nostrils. Letting the mind be blank. Letting that 
of likeness. And just to be comforting. Because you don't always have to be doing or thinking. Sometimes a little self-care is needed. Very slowly, inviting the breath to deepen back. Bigger breath. Maybe moving the head gently side to side or wiggling fingers and toes. If it feels good, you can inhale and lengthen the arms and legs all the way out. On an exhale, if you like, hug the knees into the chest, maybe rock the spine. Whenever it's right for you, making your way to a fetal position, whichever side feels comfortable. Just pausing there, maybe using your upper arm as a pillow for your ear, your head. And just taking some nice deep breaths. And thanking the body for all it does. Thanking yourself for taking the time to take care of yourself today, to move the body, to move just a little bit. And then if there's anything that you like to say to yourself, maybe words of compassion, something kind, go ahead and do so now. And something like you've got this or it's going to be all right. Everything is fine here today and now. And then very, very slowly, using the elbow closest to the ground, opposite hand, you can begin to circle your hands using that upper body strength to return to a seated position. You can keep the chin tucked today if that feels better for you. The hands can come to prayer Anjali Mudra. If you like, thumbs to forehead for honest thought, lips for honest speech, and heart for honest intention. Namaste, the light in my heart shines in the light in yours. And so thank you all for being here for Thankful Thursday. The meditations in the beginning are parts of a meditation book that I do write. I'm available for private yoga, yoga therapy, hypnosis, uh, NLP, aromatherapy, we do sound bowl meditations as well as Reiki, Reiki trainings here. Our next Reiki training is November, Saturday, November 21st. It's a full day training for one and two Reiki and an attunement certification. Uh, November 22nd, we have our sound bowl healing. Of course, every Wednesday morning, we have our therapeutic yoga class. And the last Monday of the month, which is November 28th, we have our group hypnosis. And this month, it is on gratitude. Uh, we do appreciate you being here for Thankful Thursday. We post these videos uh, within one day up on the YouTube channel. Uh, we appreciate that way it's available to everyone. We appreciate um, any likes, any subscribes, any shares. It always helps us out. If there's a topic you'd like to have discussed, we'd be more than happy to uh, present that in another Thankful Thursday. I uh, appreciate all of you, and I hope you all find something to be thankful for on Thankful Thursday. So namaste, make it a great one.